In the previous video, we learned how to relate the rates of change of one compound with another compound in a balanced equation. In this video, we want to use that information to help us calculate the average reaction rate based on a data table. In this particular data table, we see the time of the experiment and the concentration of the hydrogen recorded. We also have columns showing the change in the hydrogen concentration from the previous 10 second interval, as well as the time change from that previous interval. And then it gives an overall average rate for that same 10 second interval. If we want to calculate the change in the concentration of hydrogen over any time period, we would pick that time period. In this case, we'll look at the time period from initially from zero seconds to 10 seconds. We see that the hydrogen concentration have, has changed, and since when we do a change, we take the final minus the initial, we would have 0 0.819 as a final concentration, minus 1.000 as the initial concentration for this time period. The change in time would again be final minus initial, which would be 10 minus zero. We include a negative in front of the change of the concentration so that we end up with an overall positive rate. When we subtract the values in the numerator, we find that the change in the concentration of hydrogen is 0 0.181 molar. The change in the time is 10 seconds, and this gives us an average rate of consumption of hydrogen of 0 0.0181 molarity per second. If we look at this data table in a little more detail, we see that as the reaction progresses, in other words, as the time lengthens, the rate of change of the hydrogen decreases. So that from 40 to 50 seconds, we see that the average rate of consumption of the hydrogen was 0 0.0081 molarity per second, which is much smaller value or much slower than the initial rate from zero to 10 seconds. Why would this take place? We would expect this to take place because we learned in a previous video that the rate of a reaction is based on the concentration of the reactants. When we began the experiment at zero seconds, we had a concentration of the hydrogen reactant of one molar. But at 40 seconds, the initial concentration of the hydrogen is just 0 0.449 molar. Since we have a lower concentration at 40 seconds, the rate from 40 to 50 seconds will be slower than the rate from 0 to 10 seconds. In the previous slide, we saw how to calculate the average rate of consumption of a reactant from data provided in a data table. But you would notice that this data table does not provide information about the concentration of the product hydrogen iodide in this reaction. What if we wanted to know the rate of formation of hydrogen iodide from 40 to 50 seconds? That data is not given, but from a previous video, we learned how we can relate the rate of formation of a product to the rate of consumption of a reactant. You should recall that for this particular reaction, the rate of consumption of hydrogen is equal to one half the rate of formation of hydrogen iodide. If we use the data for the rate of consumption of hydrogen from 40 to 50 seconds, that value would be 0 0.0081 molarity per second. This would be equal to one half the rate of change of hydrogen iodide. If we rearrange the equation, to get the rate of change of the hydrogen iodide by itself, we would have two times 0 0.0081 molarity per second is equal to the rate of formation of the hydrogen iodide. When we do this calculation, we see that the rate of formation of hydrogen iodide is 0 0.0162 molarity per second. After watching this video, you should be able to use data tables to find the average rate of consumption or formation of a product or reactant over any given time period. You should also be able to explain why the rate decreases as the reaction continues. Finally, you should be able to calculate the rate of change of one compound 
if the rate of change of another compound is known.